I welcome you all to this session on uh, wireless communication. Especially, we are discussing about the physical air procedures and uh, scheduling. So, just to I will recap what I discussed in the last class is uh, I discussed about the cell search process, right? Uh, as I said, uh, when we switch on our mobile phone, uh, it uh, acquires the timing and frequency synchronization, right? Uh, with the cell with which it is attached, and it has also uh, detected the physical cell ID of that cell, right? So that will be done through the process known as cell search procedure, right? So while doing so, the user equipment identifies uh, many other things also. Means it will identify the symbol time and uh, cell uh, ID. It will identify the frequency, then bandwidth, then cyclic prefix length, and so on, right? So basically, it has uh, three process, three steps. What I can say, the cell search process. The so first one is the detection of symbol timing and the cell ID index. Okay, this is done by using the primary synchronization signal, as a PSS. Right. So PSS helps uh, uh, or detects the symbol timing, as well as the cell ID index. Then the another signal called secondary synchronization signal will help in detecting the frame timing and as well as the other cell id group index that is nid of one so this nid of two has three values zero one and two right and this has the value of from zero to 167 yeah, that is a uh, total uh, 168 uh, cell id groups are there that into three will give you 0.04 unique cell ids so that will be done by using secondary synchronization signal i said right and for primary synchronization signal we use the z of 2 sequence and uh, because they are orthogonal and they have a very good uh, uh, that is zero cross correlation property right that uh, helps uh, to do the symbol timing because uh, this uh, primary synchronization signal will be sent twice in one frame and which is also same uh, as i said in slot 0 and as well as in slot uh, 11 we are sending at symbol uh, wavedm symbol 7 uh, as the pss signal and which is same so with that it is not possible to uh, detect the frame timing hence the secondary synchronization signal can do the frame timing because it uses 31 bit m sequence and which is a cyclic shift also that leads to frame timing of the uh, frame timing detection of the uh, cell right so after doing these two steps then uh, there will be detection of other system information as i said like antenna configuration system bandwidth and other things that will be done from the pbcs that is physical broadcast channel right <coughs> so this is what happens in the cell search process so even I, I talked about the timing advance, right? How timing advance is um, uh, controlled between user equipment and the uh, ENB, right? So fine. Then uh, I discussed about the random access procedure. So this random access procedure uh, involves uh, four steps. Okay, the first step, what I said, uh, it is uh, random access preamble transmission. Means uh, once the uh, information is obtained from enb the user equipment will transmit the preamble okay from user equipment to the enb right that is the first step uh, and in the second step enb will respond to that preamble okay by sending a message called a random access response right so uh, then uh, i hope you are all know what is this preamble Right, uh, I discussed about uh, the physical random access channel. Uh, through that, uh, this preamble will be sent from user equipment to the ENB. Right, so in that, uh, that preamble will have uh, uh, what a uh, sequence, right, which is of uh, 64 uh, different patterns, 64 possible sequences are there. And uh, that sequence also depends on what type of format we use, whether it is format 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4, right? Fine. 
So ENB, as I said, it will respond for this preamble uh, by sending a random access response message to the user equipment. The third step, uh, the user equipment okay, will compare its transmitted preamble message with the received uh, random access uh, response message and then it will schedule for the uh, transmission. Means this will be done on PDCCH, okay, physical downlink control channel, that is a downlink shared channel. We say. Again, this scheduled transmission will happen on the uplink shared channel. Okay, means this this will assist for the uh, contention resolution. Okay, the last step is the contention resolution. So, what is this contention resolution? Is uh, multiple user equipments will be able to transmit simultaneously their preamble sequence to the ENB. Okay, in the same time and frequency. So, the ENB will be able to differentiate. Uh, those preamble sequences from multiple user equipments uh, uh, independently, right? Because uh, all those sequences are orthogonal to each other. Okay. Uh, fine. So here, uh, let me, yeah, I think uh, this I told about this uh, timing at once, right? Uh, then, uh, yeah, let me just throw some more light on this. Uh, all those four steps, right? Uh, I think I told enough about this uh, <coughs> random access preamble transmission. As I said, the user equipment will be randomly selecting the random access preamble and they transmit on the uh, physical random access channel, right? So I said the multiple user equipments will transmit the random access preamble simultaneously through the same channel. So ENB will be monitoring the random access channel and conducts this multi-user detection okay, uh, to identify each RACS transmission. Fine. Then uh, the RACS signals from the different user equipments, as I said, they are of this property. Uh, they are orthogonal to each other, I said, because they will be using the ZF2 sequences right, with a different uh, cyclic shift. Right? That results in uh, zero cross correlation among them. Hence, there will be no interference uh, in the preamble sequence transmission from multiple user equipments to the ENB, right? So the ENB will be calculating the timing correction for the uplink transmission for each user equipment. So that is what happens in random access preamble transmission. That is the first step. So this random access response, as I said, it will be the response message sent from ENB to the uh, user equipment, right? So the ENB will be transmitting the corresponding random access response on the downlink shared channel, etc. So here uh, means uh, the user equipment will be monitoring this uh, physical downlink control channel for this random access uh, radio network temporary identifier. So the ENB will be sending this along with that uh, uh, random access response message. What is that random access radio network temporary identifier? So this uh, RA, RNTI is the unique ID of the user equipment. Okay, so this will be compared with the preamble uh, transmission sequence, what UV will be transmitting it, right? So uh, if the received random access response matches the transmitted preamble, then the user equipment uh, will stop monitoring that PDCC channel. Okay, then the third step is what I said, uh, scheduled transmission, right? Here, what happens, the user equipment will be uh, uplink synchronized. Okay, till this, it is only downlink synchronized. And it can transmit the additional messages on the scheduled uplink shared channels. Okay, so multiple user equipment will select the same preamble. Uh, if they select same preamble, then there are chances of collision, right? That is what we say, contention resolution. Okay, if uh, multiple user equipment selects the same preamble, then there are chances of having uh, collision among the uh, user equipments. The probability of uh, occurring that uh, collision is very, very small. Okay, So what happens here, if the user equipment is connected to the cell, then uh, it will be using the cell radio network temporary identifier that we call as CRNTI okay, as the unique uh, user ID at the cell level. Okay, Otherwise, it will be using this core network identifier as the ID, okay? And here it uses the hybrid ARQ protocol to improve the 
transmission reliability uh, the last step is the contention resolution so here what happens the enb will be transmitting the contention resolution messages on the uh, downlink shared channel right that contains the identity of the winning user equipment see so many uh, user equipments will be request may be requesting for the access radio access network right among them uh, few may get right so whoever the winning that will be uh, getting that channel so the user equipment that observes the match between this identity what is that identity that uh, is crnti right and the identity transmitted in the step 3 means the crnti then uh, it will be declared as means that particular user equipment has uh, success in uh, achieving the uh, random access procedure okay and it will complete the random access procedure so this is what i wanted to convey yesterday i could not convey this in depth so till this i discussed it okay so let me uh, take up the next topic as a uh, power control in the uplink okay, as uh, today's topic right so So how many of you are aware? Uh, seven people are there. Seven people are there. Mm. Okay. Mm. Fine. Uh, uh, let me ask you questions. What is the uh, type of multiple access used in uplink? Any idea? Anyone can respond. The type of multiple access used in the uplink transmission or LTE. Yes. How no, many are there with me? Hello. Hello. Yes, Samruddhi, can you answer? Samruddhi? I am, um, yes, what about uh, Nitin? Nitin? Uh, uh, FDMA, sir. Huh? Frequency division multiple lakhs. No, can you talk a little bit louder? FDMA, sir. No, what FDME? So many things are there in FDME. Mm. For a plink transmission LTE, what is the uh, type of multiple access used? Hello? I don't know, sir. Single carrier. Or... Uh, yeah, you are on the way, right track. Tell me, single carrier? FDMA, sir. Frequency uh, division. Single carrier FDMA. That is SC FDMA, right? So, single carrier frequency division multiple access is the uh, technique uh, used for transmission in the uplink of LTE. Okay? So, because of SC FDMA, uh, we say there will be no intracell interference okay uh, and even there will be no uh, near for a problem so this intracell interference and near for problem are the two uh, problems which exist in the wcdma or hspda network so that problem is not there in lte okay but uh, there is a problem in lte uh, with the users who are at the heads of a cell because uh, what uh, is done in uh, LTE is uh, if we have uh, the uh, this power control, okay, that means uh, that is signal to interference noise ratio common for all the users in the network, in the cell, okay, irrespective of their position, where they are, whether they are near to the base station or they are far from the base station, okay. <coughs> if we are trying to maintain uh, the same signal to interference noise ratio, then 
the users who are at the uh, cell edges okay will be uh, interfering with the neighbor cells okay that uh, neighbor cell interference is the problem uh, which exists in the lte okay so that is what uh, i wanted to convey uh, okay uh, let me take up this uh, power control in uh, lte okay. uh yeah so as i said uh, the power control in the uplink is to uh, control the interference caused by user equipments to the neighboring cells okay so while maintaining the required signal to interference noise ratio at the serving cell this is the purpose of the power control in the uplink what is its purpose to control the interference caused by user equipments to the neighboring cells while maintaining the required signal to noise interference at the serving cell right so uh, what is done in conventional power control is uh, that is in the uplink uh, to achieve the same signal to interference noise ratio for different user equipments at the base station so this is what the conventional power control is done in the uplink so they are maintaining the same sinr for all the users in at the base station okay that we call it as full compensation that method okay and uh, this uh, uh, full compensation method okay which maintains same signal to interference noise ratio for uh, different user equipments at the base station uh, leads to means it suffers from low spectral efficiency because uh, it is uh, using the common signal to interference noise ratio okay is limited by the cell edges user equipments cell edges user equipments means uh, the users which are there at the edges of a cell okay so i hope uh, you got this point right the problem is what means what we do in the purpose of the power control in uplink is to control the interference caused by the user equipments to the neighboring cells while maintaining the required signal to interference noise ratio at the serving cell right so in conventional power uh, control okay in the uplink is to achieve the same sinr for different user equipments at the base station that is known as the uh, full compensation we say so this method suffers from low spectral efficiency because uh, as it is maintaining signal to interference noise ratio uh, is limited by the cell edge user equipments right uh, so uh, lte um, specifies a method known as fractional power control okay so this is the power control technique adopted in the lte uplink what we call that as fractional power control as the open loop power control scheme in lte okay Uh, this uh, allows for full or partial compensation of the path loss and shadow what is the fractional power control is the scheme of what open loop power control scheme in lte <coughs> this allows as i said for full or partial compensation of the path loss and shadow so this uh, uh, fractional power control allows the user equipments with the higher path loss means Uh, the cell edges user equipments to operate with lower uh, signal to interference noise ratio requirements right so that leads to what means uh, the users user equipment which is there at the edges of a cell will be operating at lower signal to interference noise ratio means we are uh, with this uh, by lowering their signal to interference noise ratio we will be able to minimize the intercell interference or interference with the neighbor cells right okay that is what uh, the meaning of that so the impact means uh, what i can see is a minor impact on the cell interior user equipments is that uh, they are able to transmit at the higher data rates because of this okay means uh, what i mean to say is here the power spectral density 
is constant irrespective of the bandwidth so as the bandwidth increases obviously the data rate will be increasing that is what uh, the meaning of this and uh, in addition to that open loop scheme as i said the uh, rational power control as a open loop power, uh, power control scheme in addition to that uh, it is also associated with the closed loop power control component okay in addition to that open loop power control scheme also as a closed loop uh, power control component that is uh, used to further adjust the user equipment transmission power okay, to optimize the system performance okay here there are some uh, uh, mathematical equations with which uh, we will be able to say what is the optimum power and all so let me say a few things about that so this is a fractional uh, power control scheme right that is that we that we call in short as fpc uh, scheme so which is used in lte right so the user equipment will be adjusting the transmission power according to this formula yeah so what this formula says so p is equal to minimum of p max 10 log m plus p naught plus alpha into pl okay so this is the equation we use for saying what is the uh, transmission power adjustment done by the user equipment in the fractional power control scheme okay as i said a fractional power control scheme is the scheme specified by the specifications of lde which will be used in the uplink power control right so this is a formula let me say what each component is here so p max is the maximum user equipment transmission power okay so this is the formula as i said used for adjusting the transmission power by the user equipment right so first term p max is about maximum user equipment transmission power then uh, here 10 log m is there right this m is the number of assigned uh, prds uh, physical resource blocks <coughs> right so as m increases okay so data rate will also increase and this is a p naught yes so p naught is the parameter that will be controlling the mean received uh, signal to interference noise ratio and this alpha okay is the cell specific path loss compensation factor and so pl is the downlink path loss uh, estimate calculated in the user equipment okay so all these three uh, one two three four five terms are defined what each term is right i said p is equal to minimum of these parameters so so many are there p maximum is there 10 log m is there p naught is there alpha is there and pl is there right so this is in dbm so what i said p max is the what maximum user equipment transmission power and m i said the number of assigned prbs and p naught is the what is a parameter that will be controlling the mean received signal to interference noise ratio and alpha is what is the cell specific path loss component factor and this pl is the downlink path loss estimate calculated by the user equipment right i hope all terms are clear in this okay. let us call this as equation one so what this equation is is the equation to say what is the amount of uh, transmission power adjusted by the user equipment okay so it depends on all these parameters okay so the transmit power right increases with m what is m i said this is the number of prbs that is physical resource blocks right so that is uh, used to ensure the same power spectral density as i said uh, just now right uh, irrespective of the number of uh, physical resource blocks okay means uh, even if i increase the number of uh, prbs the power spectral density will be maintained constant so that will not be increased that is what the meaning of this okay so only if we consider the path loss right because uh, as i said it has so many components right uh, number of uh, prbs then uh, path loss is also there right even uh, yeah this is the pl is the path loss right and other cell specific path loss compensation and other things right 
So here, what I'm saying is, if I consider only the path loss, and if I assume that 10 log m, okay, plus uh, p naught plus alpha into p l will be less than or equal to p max. If you just see with the previous equation, these are all the second terms, right? P max is first term, then p max comma, I have written all these uh, three terms, right? 10 log m plus p naught plus alpha into p l. If this one is less than or equal to p max, then <coughs> I can say the received signal power at the ENB will be this. Okay, the received power at the received signal power at the ENB can be written as like this. PR is equal to P minus PL. Okay. So what is this P? Uh, I, I told in the previous equation. This is what the P expression, right? That is the uh, amount of uh, transmission power adjusted by the user equipment, right? So P PR is our received signal power at the ENB, which is equal to transmitted power from the user equipment minus is a path loss, right? So which is equal like right? 10 log m plus p naught plus alpha minus 1 into pm, right? So here, so depending upon the value of alpha, means when it is 1, what happens? When it is 0, what happens? When it lies between 0 and 1, what happens? Right? So when alpha is 1, uh, I can say each user equipment has a constant received power uh, that corresponds to what uh, I said, that is the a full compensation method i said right in case of full compensation method all the user equipments will be having the same uh, sin right? so when alpha is zero when alpha is zero then each user equipment has the same transmission power right that is independent of the path loss means uh, uh, when it's alpha is zero means there is no power control only okay so when the value of alpha lies between 0 and 1 means when it is less than 1 and greater than 0, I say that is the fractional power control, okay, FPC. And the different user equipment will have the different received power at the ENB. That depends on their path loss to the serving base station. Uh, I hope uh, this is clear, three cases I said, right. Um, if I consider only the path loss, and if I assume that this factor is less than or equal to the maximum power, then uh, I think uh, any network problem. I got some this there, no? Okay. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I said when I can. So this is the received signal power at the ENB, right? That is equal to transmission power adjusted by the user equipment minus path loss. So with that, I get this equation. So depending upon the value of alpha, I say when alpha is one, it is nothing but the full compensation uh, method. What I want to say. Okay. When alpha is one, I say it is a full compensation method. That is, uh, every user equipment will have a constant received power. When alpha is zero then user equipment has the same transmission power so that is independent of the path loss and i can say there is no power control so when the value of alpha lies between 0 and 1 when it is less than 1 and greater than 0 i say it is the rational power control scheme right means uh, here different user equipments will have different uh, receive power that depends on the path loss uh, to serving the base station right so what we understand is by reducing the value of alpha, okay, reducing the value of alpha decreases the transmission power of cell heads user equipments, right? If I, uh, alpha is the word cell specific path loss component, right? So if I reduce the value of alpha, uh, what is happening? The transmission power of the cell heads user equipments will be reducing. So with that, I can say the interference to the neighboring cells will be minimized, okay? So, if when alpha is decreasing, means uh, PL, right, uh, which have large PLs and are likely to cause high level of interference to the neighboring cells. Okay, that is for large value of PL. Fine. So, what I can say by adjusting the path loss compensation factor alpha, we will be able to reduce the intercell interference. With that, I will, we will we can say we will be able to improve the spectrum efficiency. Okay. Uh, I hope uh, this concept is clear.
alpha is the what cell specific path loss component right by reducing the alpha will be able to reduce what i said uh, the transmission power of the cell edge user equipments that leads to uh, what decrease in the intercell interference with that uh, we will be able to improve the spectrum efficiency so this is what uh, the technique of power control in the uplink so the name of the power control technique in uplink is known as what fractional power control fine yes is it clear or do you have any doubts yes sir manjunath clear aithe na yes sir okay so that uh, some more equations are there to justify further this one <coughs> means uh, as i said that fpc will be treated as a open loop uh, power control scheme no so if i and uh, as i said uh, along with the open loop power control scheme there is uh, even closed loop power control component also right that is used for adjusting the uh, further uh, power with that will be able to improve the aspectal efficiency so if i consider both the schemes together means considering both open loop and closed loop component right so the user equipment will set its total transmission power so using this formula so this is a formula for the user equipment uh, total transmission power okay when we consider both the technique that is open loop and as well as closed loop components so what is that formula is p is equal to minimum of p max comma 10 log m so here we say p not of j okay plus alpha of j into pl okay it is all same to the previous one what i given uh, as open loop right only the j component is added to this then this is additional term delta mcs so that is uh, modulation and coding scheme it is okay that factor will come and another function is there that is del f of del i uh, let me see this i call as equation 3 so this is the equation for the user equipment uh, adjustment of the transmission power when we consider uh, both the components that is open loop and as well as closed loop components okay so here uh, the term j has come right p not of j alpha of j and all right so here so there are three different physical uplink shear channel transmission types it is so that corresponds to the value of j as 0 1 and 2 okay so let us say when j is 0 what happens j is 1 what happens j is 2 what happens right so for uh, uh, this uh, uh, when j is 0 actually i have not discussed about this semi persistent grant okay semi persistent i think i skipped that uh, topics after cqa that will come so let us uh, just assume that you are aware something what is a semi persistent grant so i say uh, when j is zero we say this uh, physical uplink shear channel okay transmission or retransmission corresponds to this uh, grant semi persistent grant and when uh, j is one we say this corresponds to dynamic scheduled grant okay uh, you know this one is a physical uplink shear channel transmissions or retransmission corresponds to what dynamic scheduled grant that is when j is one and when j is 2 we say the physical uplink shear channel transmission or retransmission corresponds to the random access response grant okay. so i discussed only about this random access response grant okay other two things i have not discussed that is the dynamic scheduled grant and otherwise semi persistent grant so i will come back to that later on okay. fine so what we say when uh, means uh, for j is 0 or 1 Okay, zero is for semi-persistent. One is for dynamic schedule, right? During that time, the value of P naught, okay, is the sum of cell-specific nominal component and the user equipment specific component. Okay, so as I said, P naught is the parameter uh, which is used to what uh, able to vary the uh, received SINR, right? so when uh, the value of j is 0 or 1 means it is semi persistent or dynamic scheduling this p not is composed of cell specific nominal component and a user equipment specific component right 
and for uh, j equal to 2 as i said that is for the random access response that will be provided by the higher layers so during that time the value of p naught that means the p naught is for the cell specific parameter uh, signal from the higher layers okay uh, then for j equal to 0 or 1 uh, this i told about p naught similarly for alpha of j i say it is a 3 bit cell specific parameter alpha of j because these are the equation which i have written here right p naught of j alpha of j and other things right? so i'm telling about those things means for different values of j so there are three different types of uh, physical up and shared channel uh, transmissions right i said that the one is for smooth persistent second one is for dynamic third one is for random access so for j is equal to zero or one the value of this alpha of j is a three bit cell specific parameter and that will take these values that is from zero to one okay and in between the fractions for example that is 0 0.4 0 0.5 0 0.6 0 0.7 0 0.8 0 0.9 yeah, means the alpha of j belongs to these values and for j equal to 2 the value of alpha of j will be equal to 1 okay <coughs> then uh, the next component is this delta suffix mcs right as i said this is a modulation coding scheme right so this is the user specific parameter uh, depends on the chosen modulation and coding scheme okay so what type of modulation scheme it selects and what type of coding rate it selects so depending upon that the value of this will be depending the large value of this right corresponds to higher coding rate and higher modulation order so obviously it is known right uh, then uh, next term i said delta i right that is f of delta i return right function that is a user's equipment specific closed loop correction value that is okay that will be included in the uh, physical downlink control channel so delta i is the what user equipment specific user equipment means uv specific closed loop correction value okay, included in the physical downlink control channel and that is also known as transmission power control command okay i think uh, yeah this is one important term what we can understand here tpc okay transmission power control command uh, i think some dca format we use for that dca format uh, 10 i feel okay so that is the function of delta i so this uh, delta i as i said uh, the user equipment specific uh, closed loop correction value will compensate the effects of uh, power amplifier error, path loss estimation error, and intercell interference level changes. Okay, it is for that. Uh, okay. Uh, then the function means f of delta i. I think uh, I told about. Uh, yeah, I told about P now, this one alpha j PL delta MCS and uh, this one I told what is delta I and other things. Right? So this function of uh, um, F of delta I right, uh, is to perform the closed loop power control based on the value of delta I. What is delta I said? I said delta I is the UV specific closed loop correction value right? Uh, that is included in the physical doubling control channel i said and i said this is also known as the tpc command that is transmission power control command right so that the parameter will compensate the effects of these things power amplifier error path loss estimation error and intercell interference uh, level changes right so uh, this function is to perform what i said closed loop power control based on value of delta uh, and it is user equipment specific okay. uh, in the closed loop uh, for control line uh, there are two things are there means there are two types what they can say right so which will be which, which is defined in lta one is uh, accumulated okay another one is the absolute uh, two, two types okay so let me say what is this accumulated in this case uh, 
the user equipment will be applying an offset based okay user equipment applies an offset based on the value of delta i right so delta i is the what is the user equipment specific closed loop correction value right that will be included in the physical downlink control channel i said right so in an accumulated type ue applies an offset based on this value okay uh, using the latest transmission power value as the reference that is what so that function uh, as i said is to perform the closed loop power control right based on that i said it is a user specific uh, okay yeah i said there are two types one is accumulated right in accumulated i was telling about this is the user equipment will be applying an offset based on that value right so with that uh, this is the formula what i can say f of delta i is equal to f of delta i minus 1 plus uh, delta i minus k okay here the value of this delta i okay belongs to these four values there is minus 1 0 1 and 3 that is in the db in terms of db it is and uh, we say for fdd mode the value of this k okay value of this k is equal to 4 and for the tdd mode the value of k uh, that depends on the uplink or downlink configuration so what i showed yesterday right uh, yesterday i discussed about the hybrid arq feedback process so during that time i have taken the table right uh, different uh, types of uplink downlink configuration that is from 0 to 6 right for subframe 0 to 9 i told what are the values of k so it depends on that okay so this is for the accumulated one so next one as i said the absolute right these are the two uh, closed loop uh, control uh, methods which are defined in the lt in case of absolute what happens the user equipment will adjust the transmission power with an absolute value based on delta i okay in case of uh, um, previous one that is what accumulated now they are based on uh, offset of delta i to adjust the transmission power here based on the what uh, absolute value means it will be adjusting the transmission power with an absolute value based on value of delta i so this is the formula we write for that f of delta i which is equal to delta i minus k right and again here the value of delta i belongs to this minus 4 minus 1 1 and 4 so this is in db okay again for uh, if DD mode, the value of K will be equal to 4. And for TDD mode, the value of K depends on uplink or downlink configuration. So this is how uh, the power control in the uplink is done. Okay. So uh, this is what I wanted to convey today about this power control in the uplink. Uh, so if you have any questions to ask, you can ask. Uh, but it is a uh, yes of course so, still so much of stuff is there to understand in this uh, along with uh, uh, cdf versus average to signal noise ratio graph and all i have not taken that uh, i don't want to make it more complicated just to understand what is the difficult what equations we are supposed to use and how i think uh, that much if i understand it is a good thing Mm. Yes, I think from here I said right. Is any questions to ask? You can ask about this, about especially power control in the uplink. So the thing is, what is the scheme I say uh, specified in LTA? That is FPC. That is fractional power control, right? Is the scheme. And I said, what is the problem in uh, full compensation technique? Uh, because it maintains same SINR uh, for all the user equipments uh, that leads to what lowest total efficiency and as well as uh, what uh, interference to the neighbor cell right so in FPC uh, what they do so this is the formula which we use for saying what is the 
amount of transmission core registered by user equipment. So based on this, we say it depends on the value of I mean, so many parameters are there, right? The number of PRBs, uh, E naught, as I said, that will control the mean received SNR. Then alpha is the cell specific path loss component, and PL is the downlink path loss estimated by the user equipment. So by controlling the value of alpha, I will be able to uh, what reduce the signal to interference ratio (SINR) of the user equipment which are there at the cell edge. Right? With that, I will be able to reduce the interference with the neighbor cell, and I will be able to improve the spectrum efficiency. We said, right? So. And means, uh, yeah, these are the different uh, assumptions for that. And if I consider only the path loss, this equations I get what is the received power at the ENB. Then I said when alpha is one, what happens? When alpha is zero, what happens? Then when alpha lies between zero and one, we say it's a FPC, right? Said uh, alpha decreases as alpha decreases, the transmission power of the cell is also decreases. With that, I said. Uh, Means by controlling the amount of path loss combination factor, we'll be able to reduce the uh, intercell interference. With that, uh, I said they will be able to improve the spectrum efficiency. Right? So, with that, uh, by considering both open loop and closed loop components, what is the expression for power control? Right? Uh, so, with uh, different uh, this one, I said uh, what is what. Then, in closed loop, uh, this one, I said there are two. Uh, this is defined for the closed loop power control, right? One is accumulated here. The user equipment will apply the offset based on the value of delta i, right? So with that, this is the expression for that, right? And with uh, absolute, uh, what happens? The user equipment will be adjusting the transmission power with the absolute value based on this value of delta i. So, with that, this is the expression for f of delta i that is del of a minus k, right? Uh, so with this, I would love to close for the uh, session. And if you have questions, you can ask me. Again, let us see you at uh, 12 o'clock. Any questions? No questions? No, yes. sir. Huh? Yeah, I think it is an important topic, uh, examination point. That is why I covered actually. I thought of uh, leaving that. Mm, okay, let me start module five today. Okay. So please uh, write your revision in the chat box and you can. If you don't have any questions. Yes, only 19 people are okay. I have written the reverse and can let you reverse and so you don't have any questions to ask. Jay Sri Jay Sri So people have not yet come back. I think they're thinking last minute they can join. Means hmm? what about Aishwarya V? Okay, Shara V is talking now. What more understood that about power control?
ಹಲೋ ಹಲೋ ಸರ್ ಹಾ ಕೇಳಿಸ್ತಾ ಇಲ್ಲ ನೀವು ಮಾತಾಡೋದು ಜೋರ ಮಾತಾಡಬೇಕು ಹಾ ಎಸ್ ಸರ್ ಓವರ್ ಕಂಟ್ರೋಲ್ ಆಗ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದೀರಾ ಹಾ ಸ್ವಲ್ಪ ಆಯ್ತು ಸರ್ ಓಕೆ ಹ್ಮ್ ಜೈಶ್ರೀ ಏನ್ ಮಾತಾಡ್ತಾ ಇಲ್ವಲ್ಲ ಮಹಿಮಾ ಮಹಿಮಾ ಚೌಧರಿ ಮಹಿಮಾ ರಾಜೇಂದ್ರ ಮಹಿಮಾ ಹಲೋ ಸ್ಫೂರ್ತಿ ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಮಾ ಐ ವುಡ್ ಪವರ್ ಕಂಟ್ರೋಲ್ ಇನ್ ಅಪ್ಲಿಂಗ್ Yes, sir. Hmm. Fine. Okay, then, uh, if you don't, uh, do not have any questions, let me sign off for today's uh, this class. Okay? Okay.